Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. Hallo, liebe Zuhörer, es ist Mittwoch und wir sind hier beim Pitchwork Podcast. Yes! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Scott. It's Wednesday and it's a Pitchworks podcast. Thanks as always for tuning in. This week I've got Lisa Contoro in from the German American Chamber of Commerce and I know you're wondering why. I promise I will never lead you astray. Lisa is in here talking to me about an apprenticeship program for sales engineers. Now they offer us several of these and different ones in different cities. I mean, there's a lot here, but I have always respected sales engineers that knew both sides of the ball, whether it be what does the sales process look like? How is it that you keep things on track, but also be able to get into the actual engineering side, the, the fine detail side. And this apprenticeship actually gets a high school student ready to pursue a college degree or a, you know, a, a deeper career in it. They're actually getting paid for this. And I, I, I have the curriculum literally in my left hand right now. And it's impressive. We're going to talk to Lisa. We're going to find out what's going on over at the GACC. All right, let's jump in with Lisa Contoro. Lisa, you're the apprenticeship coordinator at the German American Chamber of Commerce. And I guarantee you people are scratching their heads. And they're like, what in the world is all that about? Welcome to the studio. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a weird intro. I apologize. But, <laughs> but we need to get right out in front of this thing. Like normally... If I, if, if you would just kind of stop me on the street and you said, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm the apprenticeship coordinator at the German American mm -hmm. chamber of commerce. I would have like, I would have said something along the lines of how lovely for you <laughs> as yeah. opposed to good for you. come on the show. That's a great <laughs> thing. But, uh, there's a completely legitimate reason for mm -hmm. you to be here and we're going to dive into all of that. Let's start though with just, just the, the, the sheer basics. So I think people probably think the German American Chamber of Commerce is something that it isn't. Is that a fair statement? Oh yeah. yeah. We hear that a lot. People always always ask us like, what do you what is it you do? And we have a long list of things that we do. Yeah. Um the over overall mission is uh, economic economic development for the entire region of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And we do that in a couple of things, but let's just leave aside all the stuff. Oh there's a ton, yeah. Yeah, there's the, a ton. But there's I think a, a lot of people think it's like like a chamber of commerce for your neighborhood. And that's not what you guys are doing at no, all. No, that's not what we do. Um, so we represent Germany in Pittsburgh. We have 130 companies that are, have German origin here in this region. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, of course, you think about the buyers, Covestros, and Lanxes of this re region. But there are a lot of, um, we call them Mittelstand companies. So they're like mid-sized um, companies, manufacturing companies that came over here for the because of the steel industry, because um, of the plastic industry that is here, and also because of the life science. For example, Philips is, a, is, is the one a, I was thinking about. Exactly, right. they're just building this huge building in the East End, and um, but we also do that vice versa. So whenever we are in Germany, we wave the Pittsburgh flag, tell everyone how awesome and great this region is. And we host delegations from Germany. Um, we had the mayor of Dortmund um, here last year. And some of the companies that you're naming, you know, and mm -hmm. you say you say Bayer, which proves that you're not from Pittsburgh because we all go Bayer. I know. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It, I'm pretty sure you're right. Um, but there are there are large companies that have like a. a a major impact mm -hmm. in in their sector. Yeah, uh, I, I would, and in this region, they employ a lot of people. That's true too. Yeah. I would assume part of that is just it's difficult to reach escape velocity from a region and become a global company just mm -hmm. anyway, right? Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. hard to do. Um, now, you and I started talking about this, and I got the idea to have you on the show because mm -hmm. we started down this conversation about the German model of education. Exactly. Where there's high school, and then there's an apprenticeship, and then exactly. there's college if you choose it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a show in itself. We could talk about just well, <laughs> education in general. I could talk about general. that hours and hours and hours. <laughs> We've had a lot of conversations, yeah. both like behind the microphone, mm -hmm. as well as just a lot of the places that I go. I talk to a lot of people with different needs in terms of like businesses mm -hmm. that are hiring, uh, people that are trying to figure out how to fill gaps. Mm -hmm. um, 
I just moderated a panel not long ago on agricultural technology. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they could use an apprenticeship first. Oh, I'm pretty sure they could, yeah. Ag tech mm -hmm. is going to explode here. Mm -hmm. And this, this idea of the high school may or may not have vocational agriculture, vocational technology, you know, mm -hmm. like these programs, mm -hmm. makes it so that the students are, it's inconsistent what you get from one school to the next. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and the apprenticeships I asked you about, you... If I'm right, you have four of them, right? Like, well, there's, the, four, there's a fourth yeah. one coming. Exactly, yeah. There's, End of this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this from memory, and we're going to see if I can do this. <laughs> and I'm pretty okay. sure I'm like, wait a minute, I think I'm in trouble. Uh, <laughs> so the first one is an electromechanical. Mechatronics, yeah. Mechatronics. Sorry, <laughs> that's what you call it. Yeah, Close. Well, yeah. <laughs> not bad. Again, I'm not looking at notes. You can verify. My thing went to, uh, went to sleep. No, I mean, yeah. There's a- I'm impressed- there's a sales engineering one exactly. that you and I are going to spend a lot of time on because exactly. I, you were kind enough to share that detail with me. Mm -hmm. um, there is a materials one. Yeah, plastics. And, and then there is a welding one that will be coming in 2019, which yeah. I only know because I did the reading on the website just to prove that sometimes I do the homework. Perfect. Yeah. Not no. bad. You did so good. I'm impressed. I appreciate that because again, <laughs> like I said, I'm getting older. No, and no, I, don't have I, notes. I can confirm that. Oh, thank you so much for telling them. They don't believe me. So a sales engineering apprenticeship, mm -hmm. if you ask the members of my audience, will tell you they will probably tell you that that doesn't exist. If mm -hmm. we were not to have told them in advance that it is a real thing, they would mm -hmm. have assumed that it doesn't exist. So I went and I took a look at what your program entails, and it's mm -hmm. 466 hours. Exactly. Yeah. Of classroom. That's not of even- classroom, yeah, yeah. That's not like even OJT. That's uh -huh. like classroom time. And again, no notes, I'll have you know. Um, <laughs> Even though OJT, you have all the operations, everything. I absorbed Great. this. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> I'm going to blow sunshine at you for a second and say <laughs> I was tremendously impressed with this apprenticeship. Thank you. Um, I And before we even turned on the recorder, I said, you know, it's amazing mm -hmm. how detailed it is. I aspire to one day be able to teach something it's this the detailed. the German details. I was going to go there, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so... I am dying to tell people like how they get involved with this. Mm -hmm. um, get me started. How now that they know it exists, and and again, I can vouch for it. I looked at yeah. the fine details of what yeah. they're learning, and they are things I wish I had time to teach when mm -hmm. I do training classes. Yeah. How does one get involved with the sales engineer intern or apprenticeship? Apprenticeships. Sorry. Um, so if we talk on the side, the company. Um, First of all, of course, you need you need an, a sales engineer in your company. So that's especially for companies that are highly technical. Yes. Um, the ones we have in our cohort right now don't necessarily do the manufacturing here in Pittsburgh. Um, right now, all of them are um, German companies that have their sales headquarters or their administrative head headquarters here in Pittsburgh or in the region. Yeah. And that's why we we were thinking about okay, mechatronics wouldn't help them because they don't manufacture here, but they still need to sail. Mm -hmm. They still need to send out people, talk about their amazing products that they have, and yeah, just bring it to the customers. Right. Um, so first of all, you, you, you <laughs> would have the need, the demand for a sales engineer, and then you would contact us, um, tell us about yourself. We would then arrange a meeting to see your facility. So we get an understanding about what is your product? Right. How do you work? How is your facility? Is it a good fit is really what you're doing. Is it a good fit? Yeah. yeah. You're trying to figure we, out if somebody's going to waste their time on this. Exactly. Exactly. But that also happened to us. And it's it's not a bad thing. It's just we have to meet and like see whether they're, we can help you or not. What we cannot help you with would be um, a short-term solution. We cannot just grab high schoolers that just graduated and put it in your company and let them work for you. Right. I mean, we can, but they're not full employees right right at the beginning they need the training first so it's a more midterm to long-term solution for your workforce if you have a problem with that we have a lot of companies that have a lot of people that retire in the next years and they start to prepare we're starting to see a real shift there. yeah i know it's beginning yeah, yeah yeah so what we do the pdf that i sent you you saw all the hours yeah yeah and we cannot really do much on the classroom side because that's set those are classes um 
that were in the German curriculum. I translated that German curriculum because we are connected to the um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Germany that does the German apprenticeships. Yeah. And we are we have the luck to just grab out of their pool of all the apprenticeships that there are. There are over 300. Yeah. And they just keep adding them. It's amazing. And translate that. Um, but we can do a lot on the OGT hours. Yeah. Because... Um, <clears throat> Every company is different. And I'm different. looking here. I have it open. It's 2,605. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to take credit for remembering that. <laughs> 2,605 that are practical hours, OJT exactly. hours, exactly. in addition to the classroom hours. In so addition now, to the classroom hours, Our yeah. grand total is over 3,000 that are invested mm -hmm. in these people that are, that are learning to become sales engineers. Exactly. And with those two, um, 25, 2,600 hours, um, we can do a lot. Um, we have different... Um, so a sales engineer will go through all the departments in your company, but depending on where you really want to like put the most emphasis on, we can add or reduce hours. So with the sales engineer, it's pretty easy because it, it already has um, an emphasis on sales and marketing. Um, but for example, we have a company that is that small, they don't really have an, have an HR department. So they were like, we don't want to waste our hours on HR when we don't have a department. So we reduce the hours there. And what we're going to do is we're going to send this apprentice to another company, have an exchange, they see another oh, company cool. and can job shadow there and see what it would be like to work in a HR department and to understand all the processes that are going on there. Uh, yeah, I, you can get creative once you're, I mean, again, yeah. you've got enough hours now that you're talking about real investment and a real reason to get creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Do you think anybody noticed that I ran into the next room and got water? No. Like, did I make any noise no, when I jumped No, you were up? like a cat. I in was and out. listening the whole time, though, I promise. <laughs> um, so you translated this whole thing from the German. Exactly. So did you, like, learn that on Duolingo? No, I'm German. <laughs> That owl is something I'm a native else. speaker. <laughs> no, that green owl, I'm here to tell you. Hey, he, he teaches German oh, he, really well. Yeah, he yeah. is like bothering me all day to learn Spanish. You did a good job. Yeah, good job. I can hardly tell. <laughs> no, you're from Germany originally. Which, which part of Germany are you from? I grew up in Berlin. I still have family and friends there. And what brought you here? Um, I did my semester abroad five years ago. Oh mm -hmm. my God, I'm getting old. Welcome um, to the club. At, yeah. <laughs> At the I'm university. way further down the road than you are. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, five years ago at the University of Pittsburgh for business administration. Um, fell in love with the city, fell in love with my husband. We did long-term relationship for a while. And then I moved here permanently for... No, um, I moved here permanently about a little over a year ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, your husband, I'm going to... I'm going to put the, the, the moves on you two later to get him in here too, because I know, <laughs> yeah, I know about his business as well. Yeah. He's got a pretty cool prototyping company. And if I mm -hmm. don't have him in here, Olga Pagoda is going to scalp me. So sales engineers, mm -hmm. I want to do a quick breakout on mm -hmm. this because I think some of our, some of our listeners, maybe we have a, a large number of people that are startups. Mm -hmm. They will eventually grow into a B2B proper sales engineering environment, but they may not mm -hmm. even realize it yet. Right? Yeah. So true. as you qualify, you're taking a look at someone's environment. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you, before this process can really start, exactly. you go and you check out this company. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for? What makes you think it's a good match versus maybe not so good? Um, I mean, first of all, we we have a liability for our apprentices. So first of all, I want to see, is it safe? Right. <laughs> that seems like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. Is it safe? Um, is there really enough work for an apprentice to work there? Because we don't want them to be bored or anything. Yeah. Um, does it really make sense for that company also to make this investment into an, an apprenticeship program? Because they pay them. They pay them per hour. Um, even when they're in the classroom, the students get paid. Right. So there is quite a investment in that. But like we said, it's not short term, it's like medium to long term. And you will see the results. You will have a highly qualified um, highly. apprentice. Yeah. I mean, again, I. I, I and also to, tailored to your needs. Um, that's the whole thing where we saw the need that when you go to college for four years and you learn business, you learn sales. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can work, that you can like instantly work at a company 
where you get your new job from when just when you graduated. Right. You will still need some training. You will still need to learn about the product, the company, um, everything about it. So the company still has to invest in you. And why but not? It's really hard yeah. to find someone who is a natural sales engineer. Oh, like that it, too. Finding that too. someone and repurposing them is the is the yeah. norm. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to read from your document. I'm, yeah. I promise I won't give away all the secret sauce. Ready? <laughs> um, so I am jumping into, this is all classroom stuff. This is not your practical OJT types of things, right? Line number three, dismantles devices to gain access to and remove defective parts using hoists, cranes, hand tools, and power tools, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Again, this is not present in any curriculum I've ever seen in a sales universe, right? Going to the very next line, quality control. This is line number four. Examines form and texture of parts to detect imperfections. These are classroom things. Now, before you start thinking like this is all, you know, just like engineering stuff, 17. Participates in the Six Sigma Lean Program. Mm -hmm. And then where is the one? There was one I particularly loved. Demonstrates communication, line 23, dem demonstrates communication skills during a phone call or meeting with a client to build rapport, <laughs> showing active listening skills, and then leading right into line 24, collects information needed, steers and leads the conversation to communicate professionally, right? Yeah. This is a very nicely detailed, and again, mm -hmm. these are part of the 466 hours mm -hmm. on, to on top of the, the, the practical stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really cool. Yeah. Now, um, it's hard for me to explain to somebody who's not in it. Yeah. What a great career a sales engineer has, oh, and, yeah. and how many no, doors definitely. that opens. Yeah. Whether you want to go straight sales mm -hmm. later on, you change your mind, you say, No, I don't want to be on the engineering mm -hmm. side, or you decide that you want to move in a project management direction, or you want exactly. to move into a managerial, just a general management position. How do I get my kids involved with this? Now that we talked a little bit about the, the company side, mm -hmm. right? How do students get involved? So we had different scenarios. We um, that we have the scenario that we approach the high schools and then talk to the guidance counselor, talk to a superintendent, and then they reach out to the kids. Yeah, and we get the feedback. We also had kids that just directly reach out to us, either because one of their friends is already in an apprenticeship program and they um, shared their experiences and they loved it. Yeah, or um, they heard about it um, somewhere else, read about apprenticeships, and just wanted to learn more. We also had parents reaching out to us. We had a grandma reaching out to us. It's like, my my grandson, he would be perfect. I have a 13-year-old for you. Yeah. I have a 13-year-old <laughs> waiting at home for you right now. Don't worry. She's she's precocious. Awesome. She's quite precocious. <laughs> and she's actually taking German. Um, Great. Not that that's a requirement. Even, <laughs> it's not, but we encourage that because like I said, we have a lot of German companies in, in our different cohorts. It's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be a German company to participate in us. I know a lot of people think that too, because we are the German American Chamber of Commerce. But you don't have to. We have MSA, for example. It's right. one of our biggest American companies that is in our mechatronics cohort. Yeah, and uh, that's a tremendous company. Mm -hmm. MSA yeah, Safety. They're great. If you have a hard hat, they probably made it. Like that's Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah. real life. No, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's a fire department in your town, mm -hmm. your fire department has spent money with MSA Safety. Definitely. I'm, I'm here to tell you. Definitely. Right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, legitimately, I, this is something that I think my daughter would be perfect for. She Great. wants to understand how things work, mm -hmm. but she also doesn't want to miss out on opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, this sales engineer pathway mm -hmm. doesn't close any doors. No, not at all. Because you're technical enough at the end that you could, yeah. you could choose. And again, it's an apprenticeship, which mm -hmm. means you still, if we're going to follow that German model that you mm -hmm. said this is modeled on, we're going to, we're going to potentially go to college afterwards. Yeah. They can, um, so they, they're halfway th to an associate's degree when they're done with the sales engineer certificate f with CCAC. So they still have to take the electives and a few courses um, after that or even during the apprenticeship program, depending on yeah. with the hours and everything, how they can manage that. Um, but we have like all of our companies have college reimbursement and yeah. they offer that their chill, uh, their they offer that to the students, like if you want to pursue a higher position, if you want to go into management and you want to have your four-year degree, we support you. We have college reimbursement. You can stay here, work, 
have her um, have a good paying job and still go to college oh, that's because without it, any debt. Tell me if I'm wrong. They're taking a long view on talent acquisition. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it feels mm -hmm. like. Yeah. yeah. But you also get greater um, employee loyalty with that. Like those kids will stay in your company because they appreciate how much you invested in them. Absolutely. You said you kind of got situated like a year ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I have to know then, right? What surprised you when you arrived? You start interacting with American, even if they're German involved companies or German, mm -hmm. you know, based companies, what surprised you when you arrived that you were like, I never thought this would be like this when I got to America? In a professional environment for me was that everyone is very open, very friendly. You introduce yourself on a first name basis. You're on a first name basis with everyone, even people from like a C-level uh, management staff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, it's crazy for not me. Not the and, first time I've heard that. Yeah. No, it's not like that in Germany because we have first name, last name. You name everyone by, by their last name when they're older than you or in a higher position. And we also, we have a different kind. You don't say you, but it's n not do, but Z. Oh, it's a, so it's a more uh, formal, formal you. Yeah, exactly. I speak exactly. high school Spanish. We have the same thing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, Spanish, it's, it's the same thing. It's not to, yeah. it's usted. Well, you mentioned that you and the green owl Ustedes, were hanging out. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh, Duolingo. The no. Duolingo owl. His name is Duo, right? Yeah. And I'm so glad you got so good with German with him. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You said I translated it over mm -hmm. and it had to have changed a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. when you crack this thing open and you're like, okay, this is the sales engineer. Were there any moments where you said, oh, wait, that's more for a German customer or a German environment um, and you had to adjust it a little bit for the American? Yeah, we had to because in Germany, when you do an apprenticeship program, it's interesting. We have specific schools for that. Like I went to a specific kind of college, which is like more of a vocational type kind of college. And here you don't have that. You simply don't have the institution. So we had to look for alternatives. And we started with like independent training providers, certified trainers. But then we had this partnership with CCAC and it's just it just clicked. There was like... Yeah. Perfect partnership, um, especially with the sales engineer. I mean, their um, business administration um, associate's degree is almost exactly what I needed or what we needed. We just had to add like the production management class and stuff like that. But it was almost perfect. It's one of those parts of the economy that parents talking over a kitchen table to their, their children about what should you do with your career? What decisions should you make with mm -hmm. your education and whatnot? Mm -hmm. This is not a thing that really comes up. Mm -hmm. Now, True. I, not yet. Well, right. If you have parents that work in this environment, mm -hmm. it's a possibility. It's a growing possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would go so far as to say it's because it's so young of a title. Yeah. Uh, 50 years ago, I don't believe we had as many sales engineers out there, but no. all of a sudden you realize that having someone understanding the fine details, mm -hmm. but not derailing the sales process mm -hmm. is a, it's a really important function. And, it is. And what I, what I find is I literally for a client today, dug up an old post from Paul Graham. He's mm -hmm. the, one of the founders of Y Combinator and, mm -hmm. and just generally regarded as a sharp guy. He wrote this post, I, I want to say it was like July of 09, and it was the maker's schedule versus the manager's schedule, mm -hmm. which, which was a huge cultural rift between mm -hmm. people. And it's because makers work for four hours at a time. They focus, they get in, they have to look at fine details. Mm -hmm. And the manager's schedule, which is what a salesperson has to follow, is yeah. more half hour, yeah. one hour, half hour, one hour. It's, it's much more ADD. It's much yeah, more yeah. jumping around. And- if you don't get some of those four hour thinkers into those 30 minute time slots, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you create friction, you yeah. waste time. That is true. So I, I really want people to know about this. Yeah. It's a tremendously useful thing and there mm -hmm. is a dearth of talent. There's not enough people that are actually trying to do this kind of work. Yeah. So is, does this work on a rolling schedule? Does this work on the company's schedule? How, how do I know that it's a good time to apply to become an apprentice? It's um it's all company driven. So you can apply anytime you want and we we will make it work. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Cuz the companies don't really they they don't care when you start. It's more um so 
Right now we have the case where we have two apprentices. They um, they already started their uh, OJT hours, so they start working, and um, we will plug them into the new um, cohort in the summer, and then they start their classroom hours. Nice. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be not doesn't need to start simultaneously. It can be staggered. Yeah, and um, yeah. If I'm not in you Pittsburgh, can, is there something like this? Does do, does your organization or or an organization like it do it in other cities? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um. So what I have to say though, we we have the first sales engineer or registered sales engineer apprenticeship um in the entire state. How about you? So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so right now you can only do that uh, in Pittsburgh and yeah in the region of Pittsburgh. Um. But there are other apprenticeships out there a lot. Yeah. Um. There was just a huge. Um, round of funding from from the from the government mm -hmm. P, from PA Smart. We also got funding from that, and a lot of other companies. So, if you're interested in apprenticeships in general, there's a lot of opportunity right out there right now. Not only in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we have um, there are other GACCs, um, so German American Chambers of Commerce, in the Midwest, in the South, in New York, in San Francisco, and. Um, they all have apprenticeship programs. That's what, I, yeah, because yeah. it's one of those things where if I were in California right now, and we do have a number of listeners out there, mm -hmm. I'm like, look, I, I really like this program, <laughs> but I wish it were closer to home, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, where would they go online to find out more information? Um, right now on our website. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. G A C C P I T dot com. I almost had it. I almost <laughs> had it. I was trying to remember if it was P G H or P I T. <laughs> so check out G A C C P I T dot com, mm -hmm. and that's where I found out about the four different programs, you know, exactly. in their entirety, including yeah. the welding one, which is coming out. Yeah, and those people are making some money. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are. A lot of us, and I, I have an older child too. I've, you know, my son's about to start college in, mm -hmm. in September. And we think about what his education will cost. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We we think about this in terms of how much your student loans going to be, and how much is tuition going to be, and mm -hmm. how much will room and board be. One thing you said that strikes me is that an apprentice is actually an hourly employee; they're being paid. Exactly. What can they expect to make as an hourly apprentice? So, of course, it depends on the company, um, but the minimum is ten dollars per hour. Wow. I'm. And you're learning. Um, you're getting yeah, paid $10 no. to learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm also pretty sure that's a, a minimum required by the state. Okay. So you cannot even go below that. But we have a lot of companies that start with $12, $14 an hour. Yeah. And it's also staggered. So after a certain amount, after approximately a year, you will get a raise. Okay. So in your apprenticeship, you already make more money the, the further you progress. Right. Because the whole idea behind is you gain more skills so you bring the company more money so to speak so you also get you get bit more re useful now. rewarded for that exactly right you're useful more useful than in the beginning so you should get two dollars more per hour absolutely you've you've become more efficient you've become more productive exactly you're, the learning curve is there and you should get rewarded for that that's really a stark contrast when yeah. you think about it again and, and i'm i'm warming up to this whole german model by the way um <laughs> no i was warm before you got here we, you when you and i talked about it i thought it was really cool right the yeah. idea of uh, you, you try something, you get some exposure before you commit to an education is interesting to me. Like mm -hmm. a, a, a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. let's say, let's say that you went to, I will say like an average priced college and that we're just going to deal with tuition charges. Mm -hmm. What are you, twenty five, thirty thousand oh, yeah, dollars per year that you've got with your room and board and your tuition and what's and whatnot. Yeah. And it has always been a little odd to me that it's kind of premature to ask somebody what they want to do with the rest of their life. Oh, no. Yeah. Now, that obviously, age. that assumes that they're only going to get one undergraduate degree and whatever, but mm -hmm. I don't think that that's an outlandish assumption. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I've got 3,000 hours to try an industry, a company, mm -hmm. you know, a sales engineering role that might allow me to pivot into other things. Yeah, exactly. I think you're onto something, Lisa. And you get paid when you're in college, so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah. okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's part of your 40 hour week, so. That's, that's a pretty good deal. That's pre that's a pretty good deal, yeah. <laughs> Lisa Contoro, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, that's the end of the ride. Thanks to Lisa and everyone at the German American Chamber of Commerce. Really cool apprenticeship program. I'm a big, big fan if you haven't figured that out already. I'm going to give you that URL one more time in case you didn't catch it. It's G-A-C-C-P-I-T dot -C -C -P -P com. Uh, 
strongly suggest you have people check this out. I I think it is a paradigm changer, and I, I hope that it catches on. Again, this is a very, very rewarding career. Uh, Buzzy and I are going to get back into the lab. We're going to make another Pitchworks podcast for you. It'll be out next Wednesday. We hope to catch you there. The Pitchworks podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart, LLC. Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. E-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S dot com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.